So just a bit of background about um, what community dietitians do. I'm sure you're all aware, but um, essentially um, we provide tailored nutritional advice um, to clients um, in a range of settings. We work with individuals and groups. Um, we help to manage chronic lifestyle conditions such as heart disease, diabetes. Um, we work with the whole lifespan, so infants right up to your 100 plus, and I do get a few referrals that are 100 years plus. <laughs> um, we look, we work with um, clients who have specific health conditions and nutritional needs. Um, we provide education, counselling, uh, work on skill development and monitoring. Um, and we look at the psychological, social, cultural and environmental context. So we're working within the social model of health. Um, various settings, so mainly um, in the clinic here, but we also work um, in clients' homes, um, in SRSs, um, various outreach settings as well. Uh, we work with a multidisciplinary team, you guys, um, and the rest of the allied health team, GPs, um, specialists. And we also have a role in building capacity of the um, workforce here to help address nutritional issues in your clients. Um, through um, sharing information, Nutrition Master and those sorts of things. So um, some of the things that we might do, um, and this isn't an exhaustive list, is um, what you see on the left here. So we might help to manage um, lifestyle conditions, address weight issues, whether that be overweight or underweight. Um, look at poor appetite or people who might have difficulty shopping or cooking or accessing food. Uh, we help to manage bowel issues, altered bowel habits um, or specific gastrointestinal conditions. Um, look at optimising nutritional intake on a texture modified diet if your client has swallowing difficulties. Um, try to provide very practical and easy to follow advice for our client group um, and help them to access quality food regularly. Some of the things that we might do to address these things um, that you've probably seen are um, we often give clients a shopping list that'll have specific foods that they need to buy to um, manage their specific conditions. Um, we'll do tailored meal plans. We might provide basic recipes if the client's in a position to do some cooking. Um, provide information about food access, where to access food um, safely. It might be emergency food relief. It might be around how to, um, how to do make the most of their budget, their food budget. Um, information around oral supplements, so sustagen's a pretty common one um, and there are specific other ones as well for particular nutritional conditions. Um, we might talk about label reading, um, we might look at eating behaviour strategies if your client has um, issues around emotional eating, comfort eating, that sort of thing, um, any disordered eating. We might um, suggest a food diary, particularly for clients who um, might have gastrointestinal symptoms, so to sort of match up the foods to the symptoms, or if they've um, got a particularly erratic eating pattern that, that might be hard for them to report back on in an appointment. Um, we communicate with carers, family, healthcare team. Um, we provide supporting educational material, which would be, could be written or it could be pictorial, depending on the client's um, literacy levels. Uh, we look at goal setting, we do care plans, um, and we refer to other services. So that could be um, other allied health services, it could be um, diabetes educator, for instance, it could be a specialist service, um, could be um, meal providers, so um, del delivered meals or emergency food relief, cooking classes, um, other social groups, that sort of thing. Um, and we feed back to our referrers. So why would you refer to a dietitian? Well, um, there's many, many, many reasons. Um, these are just a few of them. And um, a lot of the referrals we get from case managers are for um, um, a couple of these top, re top reasons here. Um, they might have significant unexplained weight loss, particularly in the frail aged group. Um, or it could be due to illness, substance abuse, um, poor oral intake, um, could be reduced motivation to cook. Um, 
loss of appetite and interest in food we see a bit as well. Um, could be for diabetes or impaired glucose tolerance, um, high lipid levels, high blood pressure. Um, weight gain as well is a big one, um, or altered eating habits due to medication or mental illness. Um, emotional or disordered eating, we see this a lot, um, and that's sort of um, across the, the age span as well. Um, altered bowel habits, um, GI conditions, so celiac disease, fructose malabsorption, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, um, problems with chewing or swallowing, um, food allergies and intolerances, iron deficiency anemia we see, um, and other nutrient deficiencies as well. Um, and osteoporosis. So that's just a handful. There's probably a thousand other reasons you might refer your client. And if you're ever unsure, you can always talk to us as well. Um, so this is some of the stuff that um, we find is um, really useful to have in a referral. Firstly, the referral source and contact details. Um, sometimes these are actually missing. Um, <laughs> we don't know where the referrals come from. Um, and best contact details as well, so it's always good to have direct um, numbers if possible. Um, with the reason for referral, um, it's really useful to have your view as a worker, but also what the client's view is, whether um, they feel it's an issue for them, um, because often we find what they want to get out of the appointment is very different to what might be um, suggested in the referral as the reason medical history um, and any relevant test results if known. So if they've got diabetes, it's really useful to have um, an HbA1c level, for instance. Um, the other information that might be available to us through other assessments or through common assessments um, is listed below. But um, if it's not available, it's really helpful to include some social history. So if the client lives alone, for instance, if they're able to cook for themselves. Um, any medications if known. Um, also previous interventions, so have they ever seen a dietitian before? Have they tried to um, address this issue in the past? What's worked for them? What hasn't worked? Um, and their readiness to change or an indication of their motivation level. So sometimes um, we find that clients uh, might have too much other stuff going on at the moment and it's not actually a priority for them. Um, and sometimes they stay on the wait list a little bit longer if that's the case. Um, if they're really motivated, we try to see them as soon as we can. Um, who else is working with the client? Um, their food security status. So um, if you ask the question, has the client run out of food in the last 12 months and not been able to afford more? Um, standard food security question. Um, any unintentional weight loss or gain that you may be aware of? Um, mouth, teeth or swallowing issues, any um, sort of known special dietary information. So um, are they really particular about some things? That, um, do they have any intolerances? Um, anything sort of unusual about their eating habits? Um, and any relevant information about the way they like to receive information. So um, some clients um, aren't likely to be able to sit in a standard assessment for an hour. Um, so that's really useful for us to know, um, you know, whether they like to receive a lot of written information or they prefer not to, um, if there are any aggressive behaviours that we should know about, um, the best time for appointments so that we can put that on the waiting list and um, intake can send them an appointment letter accordingly. Like if they're, if they're never going to be around at 9.30 in the morning, we'll send them a later appointment, for instance. Um, and anything else that you think would be useful to, to know before that first session. What you can do to assist your client um, after you've made a referral and they're waiting on the wait list, um, it's, it's useful um, if you can talk to them about what they want to achieve so that they've got an idea about um, what they might want to get out of the appointment. Um, we find that's a lot more useful um, than when they show up and they sort of sometimes don't even know if why they've been referred um, and they don't really know what they expect to get out of the appointment. Um, encourage questions, so if they've, if, um, they've got things that they might want to ask us at the appointment, that's really good f for them to get the most out of the appointment. 
Um, you could consider a food diary and that, that could be um, as a, something to bring along to the appointment if, if, like I said, their eating pattern is really erratic. It's really going to be hard for them to report on if they've got memory issues um, or if they're experiencing um, gastrointestinal symptoms. That sort of thing can be really useful. Um, if appropriate, if they've been waiting a little while, you could encourage a simple change before the appointment. Um, for instance, you know, if they're um, drinking three litres of soft drink a day, try replacing some of that with just a plain mineral water or something, something that is likely that they can have a go at so that we can sort of go from there and they've already started to make some change before they have their appointment. Um, reminding them of their appointment and assisting them with transport if required is, is really helpful. Um, sometimes uh, appointment letters might go out two weeks in advance and we do have SMS reminder systems but not all clients have mobiles so uh, we find it works really well if the case manager is in contact with them as well. Um, and liaising with the dietitian around um, expectations and that's for you as a worker what you'd like them to get out of the appointment and also what, what they would like to get out of it. Um, during and after the appointment, we find ideally if you're able to attend that first session with the client, it makes a huge difference to um, A, our non-attendance rates, um, B, to them feeling supported um, and helping us to gauge what might be appropriate in that session. So. Um, sometimes um, if we don't know the client, um, it might be hard for us to gauge what's too much information at a first session. Um, and we find that that can really make a difference to them coming to review appointments if they feel supported by their case manager at that first session. Um, check in with the client after the appointment if you can. Um, support them and assist them with any of those interventions. So if, if they were given a shopping list, you could ask them how they're going with that. Um, if they um, need to prepare any supplements, you could check that they know how to do that, for instance. Um, and that would be probably either written down for them or written on their care plan. Um, support them with any follow-up. So sometimes we suggest checking their weight once, once a fortnight or once a month or going and having some repeat blood tests um, and liaising with the dietitian re how they're progressing with their goals as well. So monitoring and follow up, um, it's really useful if you can check with the client, um, are their actions and their goals being achieved? So we would do that at review appointments, but between appointments, this is something else that you could look at. Um, why are they, why or why not are they being achieved? Do we need to um, come up with some other strategies? Um, is their condition um, worsening or is it improving? Have there been any new changes, new information, um, new medical issues that might require some further support? Um, would they like to come back for a review? Sometimes clients do, sometimes they don't. <laughs> um, when would be a good time for a follow-up appointment? Uh, are they ready now? Um, should we give it a few more weeks? Um, are there other things that they'd rather address first? Or would a secondary consult or a case conference be useful if um, there's a lot going on, a lot, lot of, a lot to discuss and a lot of team members involved? Um, and of course, if you're unsure, talk to us. And remember, for, for all of us, dietary change isn't always easy. Um, ideally, it requires a stable lifestyle and the willingness and ability to participate actively in matters relating to one's own health. So. Um, Sometimes we get referrals um, that may not be, um, the client may not actually be in a position to make change. So it's just worth having that conversation beforehand. And I realise sometimes um, in the window between making the referral and the appointment coming through, things can change for the client. So we are aware of that.